Recently, I've been spending every night at 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the sauna reading this book, A Numeracy by John Allen Paulos. So far, it's been a fine read, and it's certainly left this problem of a numeracy at the front of my mind. When you spend so much time doing and thinking about math, you can be surprised by how difficult basic mathematics can be for the average person. And thinking about the basic number skills that common people may or may May not have, well, it made this question really catch my eye. This is a $125,000 math question from the game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and this has been making the rounds lately. You could tell me if you disagree, but I think most people could solve this question, even if they needed a calculator and a pencil and paper to answer it confidently. I think most people could answer this question. But putting it in this context of a game show, high pressure, money on the line, no pencil, no paper, it definitely provokes discussion about what the best way to solve the problem is. Is there a nice, clever way to solve the problem that doesn't require writing things down and doesn't require much mental power? Something that perhaps the average person could do while on the hot seat of a game show. Before further discussion, let me just give you a little bit of context. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is a very popular game show where a single contestant tries to successfully answer a sequence of increasingly difficult multiple choice questions. Of course, they earn money by correctly answering these questions with the potential to push their luck all the way to a million dollars. Here's the scale of the money earned for each question along with an item that costs roughly that amount next to the question number. You can see that it starts at $100 for the first question and roughly follows a doubling scheme from there, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and so on. Now, just by correctly answering a question, you're not guaranteed to get that amount of money, but there are a couple of checkpoints. Once you pass question five, you lock in your winnings at at least $1,000. There is then one more checkpoint if you can answer a few more questions questions correctly. If you get to 10 questions and answer this correctly, you lock in minimum winnings of 32,000. After this, if you choose to answer subsequent questions, you're putting the extra money on the line. That means when we're looking at this question about which of these numbers is largest for $125,000, this is two questions past that previous checkpoint of $32,000. So we could choose to walk away instead of answering the question, we could take our $64,000 winnings, but if we answer the question wrong, we're only going to go home with $32,000. There is great incentive then to take a stab at answering this question, potentially winning $125,000 and being only three correct answers removed from the million dollar prize. For perspective, here are a few of the previous million dollar questions from the game show. The answers highlighted green were correct answers given by the contestant who received that question. For this question, the correct answer is B. For this one, it is D. For this one, it is C. And for this one, it's A. As you can see, these harder questions are usually some sort of obscure trivia, which was never that satisfying to me as a viewer, because I don't know random trivia. I know math, frogs, tarantulas, and that's about it. I'd assume that to pretty much all of you, at least a few of these million dollar questions look pretty darn hard, especially in comparison to this one $125,000 question about which number's biggest. Before anyone from outside America says this is a $125,000 question in the States, but would be a $1,000 question in my country, I just made the joke, so you don't have to. In fact, a According to this 2023 data from the International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement, the United States fourth grade math scores you can see here are in fact above the international average, but indeed we have a lot of room to improve. As for the US, I think the average American could answer this question correctly, but I also think many of us would be disappointed by how much struggle it might take. I'm curious to hear how you think the average citizen from your country would do 
answering a question like this. Of course, if you have pencil, paper, ample time, and even a calculator, this should be a very easy question to answer. Which number is biggest? Well, letter A is the number of hours in a year. To find the number of hours in a year, we can just take the number of hours in a day, 24, multiply that by the number of days in a year, 365, and doing the multiplication, we see that this comes out to 8,760. Answer choice B is the number of seconds in a day. For this, we take the number of seconds in a minute, which is 60, multiply that by the number of minutes in an hour, which is 60, multiply that by the number of hours in a day, which is 24. And crunching the numbers on this, we find that the total is 86,400 seconds. Answer choice C is the number of days in a decade. That's just the number of days in a year, 365, times the number of years in a decade, which is 10, so 3,650. We're not taking leap years into account here because they're not significantly going to change the numbers. Indeed, if the question actually wanted us to take leap years into account, it would have to tell us, for example, what decade we're counting the number of days over, since different spans of 10 years will have different numbers of days depending on how many leap years are in that 10 year span. Finally, answer choice D is the number of minutes in a week. To calculate this, we take 60, the number of minutes in an hour, multiply by 24, the number of hours in a day, and then multiply by seven, the number of days in a week. And doing the multiplication here, we see that this comes out to a total of 10,080 minutes. Please forgive me for having to squeeze that zero in there. So then if we were to put these in order to see which comes first and answer this question, it's easy to see then that eight 8,760 would be first. That's assuming that when we sort these alphabetically, the blank space is valued above the Y at the end of 80, 86,000 versus eight space thousand. So this would come first and then the correct answer to the question. Oh, wait a minute. It says mathematically, not alphabetically. Okay. So mathematically, which of these numbers is largest? Well, it's easy to see when you crunch the numbers, it's 86,400 and it's not close. Of course, in the context of the competition, we don't have a pencil, we don't have paper, we don't have a beautiful Mary Kay calculator. So how could we come to this conclusion and identify the number of seconds in a day as the greatest number, mathematically, of course. One kind of clever thing we could do is rewrite these products a little bit to make them easier to compare. Of of course, a lot of math folk would have no issue whatsoever comparing these products as is without carrying out the multiplication. However, we could rewrite them to make the comparison more trivial. 365 is basically 12 months of 30 days each. Not exactly, but close enough for our calculations. But we're going to rewrite that. Instead of thinking of 365 as 30 days over 12 months, let's think of it as 60 days times six. So basically just grouping together pairs of months. There are six pairs of months. A pair of months has 60 days. If we do that, then the products we are comparing look like this. So these are the same products from before, but we've replaced 365 with this more friendly approximation, 60 times six, 60 times six. Now the presence of more common factors between these products makes them trivial to compare. Clearly the first one is less than the second because 60, 60, 24, 24, but then six and 60. So clearly the second one is bigger. So the first one can't be the biggest. Similarly, the second is clearly bigger than the third, 60, 60, but then 60, 10 and 24, six. Doing the comparison of the factors makes it clear the third number isn't the biggest either. Similarly, when we compare the second to the fourth, 60, 60, 24, 24, 60, seven. Clearly this second one is bigger than the fourth one as well. And so indeed the second number, the number of seconds in a day is the biggest. And it's not necessary to calculate all of these things exactly to figure that out. Although this works, I would say it's maybe working a bit too hard to avoid computation. A non-mathematical person is probably not gonna think to rewrite 365 in their head as 60 times six in order to have a more friendly comparison with 
with the other products. And by doing that rewriting, now all of the products have three factors, as opposed to if we just write them out the way you would if you were doing exact calculations, two of these products have only two factors, which makes it a little easier to kind of see everything in your head. So here's what I think would be the easiest way to solve this problem. Assuming there's no time limit, which for who wants to be a millionaire, I think there usually isn't. It does depend on what year this was shot though. But assuming we can just take a couple minutes to think through this carefully in our chair, here's what I think the easiest, most accessible solution for this problem is. I think one by one, the average person is going to see these products in their head while they go through the different possible answers. The average person might not be able to see all of these products at once in their head, the way we might gaze upon them on a piece of paper. But as long as you've gone answer by answer and pictured these products one at a time in your head, you may notice that answer choice A and answer choice C both have this multiplication by 365, which makes those two very easy to compare. Comparing these two, it's clear that hours in a year is going to have this factor of 24 with the 365, whereas days in a decade is going to have 10 times 365. So clearly between those two options, the first is bigger. Similarly, when looking at each of these answer choices, one may notice that answer choice B and answer choice D has this factor of 60 in common. However, because answer choice B concerns seconds in a day, it has two factors of 60 before getting that factor of 24, whereas answer choice D has only a single factor of 60 for 60 minutes in an hour. If you can just see these computations a couple times in your head side by side, it's clear that the number of seconds in a day has to be the bigger option. At this point, we've narrowed the choices between A and B without doing hardly any computation at all. These two remaining options are easy to compare because they both have a factor of 24, so we can essentially eliminate that and just focus on comparing 365 with 60 times 60. As long as you've retained the most basic number sense or ability for mental multiplication, these should be very easy to compare. 60 times 60, well that's 6 times 6, 36, but stitch on two zeros, 3,600. It's nearly 10 times bigger than this. And thus, one can confidently conclude that the number of seconds in a day is, mathematically, the biggest number among these four options. It's hard to imagine a much easier $125,000 question than this but no doubt this would be surprisingly tricky for some people. Although as easy as this question should be, especially for those of us who are fond of mathematics, what your average person doesn't realize is someone studying math might go weeks without ever even seeing a number. Indeed, sometimes a math major will look upon numbers showing up in their homework with the same sort of reticent fear and surprise that an eighth grade algebra student will look upon letters showing up in theirs. But there you go, that's a shockingly easy question from who wants to be a millionaire. I'll be curious to see what you think the easiest way to solve this would be in the comments. Let me know if you had any questions and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsold the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you